episode number 82 of The Carmudgeon Show. That's part of the Haggerty Podcast Network. My name is Jason Camisa, and that over there can introduce itself. It's Derek Tam Scott. With a hyphen. With a hyphen between the Tam and the Scott. This the Only 82nd the second episode. My, ba- my middle name is actually also hyphenated. Are you kidding? I am not kidding. You have a double hyphen? Yes. We are 82 episodes in and just learning this about Derek Tam hyphen Scott. That my middle name is also hyphenated. I'm not. I, 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 <laughs> are we going to be able to even use this take or is your brain going to explode? It just did. I just, it just self-contained. But are you uh, yeah, fucking I, I, kidding I, I me, Derek? I that from you. I'm sorry. For all of, we've been friends for 10 years or longer. A lack of transparency. Oh, uh, you think you know someone there and they find out they're a double hyphen. Uh, this episode is about garages and car storage generally. We didn't give really anything useful information. but we Oh, did. stop it. We, it's not that we didn't. It's that we won't. <laughs> okay. This part of the Fine. episode is played before they've heard the, ep- they've heard okay. the episode. So double hyphen. Try again. Uh, we won't give you anything useful in this inf- in this episode, but you will learn about uh, Jason's evolving car storage solutions and mine and yours as well. and other people's yes large car collections yeah how the life inside of a, a very spectacular car collection how to we can't show see it. it right but uh, we unfortunately we do have some uh, very good advice on how to make a ghetto ass garage look quite nice oh that's true see. Okay. Valuable Some information. Value, uh, a little bit, but well, only a little. Available only. On episode 82 of the Carmarjan Show, part of the Haggerty Podcast Network, I'm Derek Tam hyphen other hyphen Scott, and that's Jason Camisa. Hyphen Liz Camisa. How could you do this to me? After all these years? Yeah, I know. Here, I'll get my right. license out. So, let me see this. And hold on. No, no, no. You're no, not, no, no. You're, no. no, I'm no, not going to tell no, anyone. No, no. We have I'm to not, end the intro. I'm, no. The intro is come, over. Give it to me. Do, 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 do. Carbungeon song. Oh, fuck. Aha. Now we can end. <laughs> I'm gassy. With another episode. Back in gassy with another episode of the Carmudgeon Show. Part of the Haggerty Podca- Podcast Network. Anyway. Wait, no, we did the intro already. I know, I know. Um, what How just, are you? Did you survive the fumes from your uh, new garage floor? I did. I moved out. I'm smart. Yeah, I wish I had done that. So mm. the Haggerty Studio has a new floor in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we had some lifting um of the epoxy that we put down a couple years ago so i called the guy who did it who's a car guy and he's he's awesome actually he's really really nice guy really hard worker and he came and fixed it and i'm like you know while you're here um 13 years ago when i bought my house i did uh, a coat of rust-oleum and it was like a two-part epoxy and then you're supposed to do a second coat and then a clear coat on it Uh, i got really bored and didn't so you just did the first i did the one coat one coat and 13 years later it still looked great I mean, considering hadn't lifted, looked fine, a couple little stains, not really all that bad. And um, I thought now is the time I want to be a grown up and I'm going to make a nice garage. And so I had Rob do the floor and then you had Rob do your floor. Yes. And I did not know that when epoxy cures, it uh, really smells a lot. I did. All right. The first time I did mine, it was fine. Then when we did this studio here for the first time, it was fine. Didn't you say that the neighbors next door... That wasn't complained? here. This was like PPG, silver base, whatever, blah, 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 blah. If, 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 when we did the studio here. When I did my warehouse, oh my God. So the warehouse is one unit in a 10 warehouse unit building. And uh, most of the other spaces were an office and they evacuated. And they, I mean, leave it. I mean, oh, yeah, totally no, they've they evacuated. And of course, the funny part is that it's an engineering company, and they do like construction engineering. And on day three, the owner was like mighty pissed off because he's like, you know, you're costing me real revenue here. And the office manager, who was one of the engineers, she kept saying like, we just can't get rid of the smell. We can't get rid of the smell. We have all five furnaces running. And well, I'm like, wait a second. Problem. You're drawing from the mechanical room, which. The drawing from the returns. I'm like, you do, you're an engineer. You do realize that furnaces don't intake fresh air, right? You're recycling the same air. Open the fucking garage because two of their units are warehouses with bay doors. I'm like, just open the bay doors, open all the other doors, count to five, and it's done. 
because mm. it was a windy day. Sure as shit, yeah. yeah. But that, that smell was a brutal. Yes, and then they, you get it twice because there's the base coat and then there's the clear coat the next day. And so in my garage, there's two units in the building and the neighbors, I was like, oh God, I feel so bad for the neighbors because they they're you? getting all the costs. No, we like preemptively were like, uh, sorry about the smell. We didn't realize it was going to be like this. And they were like very sweet about it, and that which was great. That's but it was, pretty amazing. It was like, yeah, it was forty eight hours of just outrageous smell. So if you ever get your floors epoxied, or do it yourself, I don't remember. I don't out. remember the other stuff smelling anything like this. But uh, hopefully that means it's more durable. I don't, I don't know. We'll find out. We'll find out. Um, yeah. So we both are reveling in the fact that we finally have sort of nice garage setups for the first time in my life. That's true. Your previous garage was pretty amazing. It was big, yeah. but it was not nice. Like there was always dust everywhere from the wall. It has bricks on the wall and mm-hmm. the, the, the bricks, the, the <laughs> bl- mortar, it turns into dust. And there's just a row, like a pile of dust, dust everywhere. And the problem also was that it was shared. Right. Um, and so there were other people who would have access. And so you could just never keep anything nice in there. Like it just never could be nice. I mean... You did keep nice things there. I kept the only thing that was nice were the cars, but everything else about the cars wasn't nice. It wasn't well lit. Um, Yeah, you certainly couldn't work on stuff down there. It wasn't a high ceiling. I did, but yeah, it wasn't a high ceiling. Yeah, we did. We did seats in your nine eleven. Yeah, and I was like routinely doing maintenance. I mean, we did like a an E forty six transmission fluid service down there. We did a radiator and the four hundred E down there. Uh I've definitely done projects down there. My problem with that garage was only that it was a, a full story below ground level yes and that happened in a very short distance so yeah so the driveway was incredibly steep yeah and Um, if anything doesn't start or doesn't how the fuck do you get it out of there yeah i know that was really quite problematic and i had the driveway like sort of leveled somewhat or i had it uh, and then i had to do it again when i got the gt3 so the gt3 would go in that garage like it was just uh, it was always a little bit what do you think did you measure the grade no it has to be 38 40 yeah i mean yeah I, mean, I think p- people think i've said a couple times you know mentioned driving stick at 30 something percent grades in san francisco and people think i'm joking no 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 it's lombard is what 32 or whatever there's i mean there are definitely places where it's a necessity um yeah hold on i'm are turning you thermally i no, i'm turning the air conditioning down because i feel like it's making a lot of background noise i think with the mic the we don't get anything i was you're how quiet that is now no i can hear paolo breathing stop breathing paolo stop it Oh, he can't hear us. Does he? You're not listening, are you? You're not. Oh, he's no, not. Sorry, we're making fun of him. He doesn't have headphones on. He's doing uh, he's, uh, a previous he's doing episode. Inserts. Yeah, <laughs> from previous episode. Um, yeah, garages in San Francisco are pain in the ass, but often. But you just get, having one is such a blessing. I mean, um, yeah. the first place I ever lived, I had a one car garage. My 911 would not, could not. It would drag it going in and out of that driveway. It didn't have enough ground clearance. And so I tried to get in and out of the garage once using two by fours and I um, damaged the car. (laughs) (laughs) Two by four snapped. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And you had to kind of build momentum because it was uh, quite inclined. So the whole thing, I had a seven at the same, I had an E38 seven series at the same time and it could use the garage, but the 911 could not, it was one car. So the 911, I just street parked my 911 in those days. You have to here. You would never street park an air-cooled 911 in in San Francisco anymore, but. Really? I see them all the time. But they're like not, they don't live there. They're just like out being used and then someone parks it when they're getting a coffee. The crazy thing to me about moving to the city many years ago now was that you saw, you did and still do see old car street park that you just yeah. don't see anywhere yeah was, i mean lots of 123s and volvo 240s sometimes like a corvair or a yeah. ford falcon or there's a street park 60s Toronado in yeah. my friend's neighborhood that i see all the time there's stuff here that would rot anywhere yeah. else and that's the thing is cars don't die from the climate here they die from bad drivers hitting them um yes. So you see street parks. Have you seen street park beetles to this day with yeah. no corrosion on them? No, yeah. Fi- it's yeah. The paint's all fried, but there's no rust. Depends on what part of the city. Sometimes yeah, there was an orange nine twelve with black plates. I used to see pretty re- until about mm, maybe five years ago, but I used to see that all mm. the time. There's just stuff. Honda Beat. T- there's a red Honda Beat that I that is always street parked. Oh really? Uh, yeah. Um, just neat. I, I like that about San Francisco, but it's you know the most expensive city in the U.S. Usually, you know, it swaps back and forth between New York all the time, and New York is not the kind of city you want a car. But San Francisco, you want a car. 
Yeah. Um, There's great. so much cool stuff within driving yeah. distance. Everybody moves from New York to San Francisco and they're like, it's small, so small and shitty here. And you're like, you're not doing it right. You're like, right. what do you mean? You have to leave the city to do stuff? And you're like, that's where the best stuff is. That's yeah. where you like go hiking or skiing like or both in the same day if you desire that's the thing as as a native new yorker when you know i came here and you're you leave manhattan and you can go 30 40 50 60 miles in every direction and it gets slightly suburban and that's it san francisco ends suddenly and at the north side of the peninsula and becomes the golden gate bridge which becomes marin county of which 80 percent of its landmass is protected and it's not just like oh it's not really it's, you know it's densely partial rural. it's like a national park yeah it's it's mountains and ocean and all completely uninhabited other than the strip right by the highway and so yeah the city just ends like that and so you want to have a car but then it's so expensive to have a garage and um yeah so we all i mean everybody i know who's a car person in san francisco you're like where's that car you're like oh it's in the spot that i found in this neighborhood that i rented and yeah. then we're like i don't even know where this one is i got the hookup on the free garage over here and mm -hmm. you know or it's it, everyone has these solutions where their cars are all strewn around in one yeah. place and it's just a reality of being a car enthusiast and living in the city. In the so city, right. Go. And one of the reasons I live right outside the city is to avoid that. But even still, I mean, I have a two-car garage in my house, so I have a kind of... Officially? Officially, yeah. So my, <laughs> I, for years, I put three in there out of necessity. One time I got four in, couldn't close the door completely, but I did get four cars in there with the door closed enough that the, kept the rain out. Um, also out of necessity because my... I think it was my previous cabriolet. Yeah, it was my previous cabriolet flooded um, outside in a huge rainstorm. And so like I had to get it in and dried off, but I wasn't going to let the Scirocco, I think it was the Scirocco, the Mercedes and the E30 maybe with the other three cars. None of them were sitting outside. So I'm like, well, I'll find a way. And I did. Um, and uh, Not your first time finding a way. No. So my first ever house was a one car garage that I, for the entire six years that I owned that, I parked two cars in. My cars are little and I'm really good at backing things into tiny little spaces um, like where the mirror is at quarter an inch from mm -hmm. up from the wall. And um, but, and now, so this house I've had for a long time now and I thought, all right, so the garage door is from like the 80s. It's like a barely insulated Oh, shit. speaking of which, when I was there picking up your drill, I found a bolt on the floor from the garage door. It, I saw it fall from above and uh -oh. then I saw it tinkle on the floor and I picked it up. It's on the counter by, by the back wall. Sorry, I just thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> good to know uh that door is the, the where the garage door opener attaches to it is pulling out of the door maybe that's and where it's from that's probably where it's from and so at some point it's going to rip off completely and over the last probably 10 years i've routinely had to tighten that and then i want to put a, a nut on the back side of it but it's just warping and so i thought all right look this garage is in a lot of instagram photos and you know it's just it's a photo studio effectively it's time so i did this garage. so when i bought the house there was a the garage was fully unfinished, so no drywall, no lighting, no nothing. And uh, it had a washer and dryer in there. Get the fuck out of here. I don't need a whole closet, but I do need garage spots. So the laundry went back in the house where Jesus intended it to be. And then I drywalled, I put, drywalled the ceiling because it was open rafters, uh, put a ceiling in, and I don't have any money. So the the cheap way that I figured out was Home Depot had $9.89, $9 $9.89, four foot, T40, so like the the 40 watt fluorescent double twin tube mm -hmm. four footers, and I bought ten of them, so it cost me under a hundred bucks with tax um, plus light bulbs, and then I just ran extension cords on the ceiling. So I had, I put an outlet in when we did the ceiling, um, and I put that outlet on a switch, and so I turn it on, and I have a thousand watts or eight hundred watts. Sufficient of, light in your garage is one of the most luxurious experiences on earth. Hundred percent. I mean, I do real work in that garage. I built a couple engines in there, and well, I technically built half the engine but then i swapped a couple engines in there and so you know i did the floor with that 50 dollar gallon of epoxy from home depot and i did the home depot lights and um that's kind of it and then i did the sheetrock sheetrock right but then i did Insulation. the cool artwork and the track stuff um and now i'm like all right the garage door is falling apart it's time so like a big boy i called the company and i oh ordered i know my mom has one of these what? It's like the metal frame one with the frosted glass. How the fuck did you know this? Because you saw one somewhere and you were like, that's the garage door I want. Yeah. So I ordered recently. There's six months back ordered. So I have six months to figure out how to make the second payment on it because I paid for half of it. Yeah, um, they are costly. Everything. And then you get the DC motor uh, on the garage lift that's super quiet. and uh, Side mount. 
Uh, so here's the thing is the garage looks pretty cool in the pictures because so in the pictures you see sort of like eye level down for the for the car and I have dark gray walls, which I had to do because of the white Volkswagen poster that I stole from Volkswagen on the press launch. This was Mark Mark 7 Jetta launch was in San Francisco and I walked in and there's a white canvas like, you know, one of these shitty like online printers like but sh- canvas print of Mark 1 through Mark 7 golfs. And I'm like, that would look fucking amazing in the garage that I just drywalled. And I pulled it right off the wall. And Scott Vazen, who was the PR guy, runs over, what the fuck are you doing? And I'm like, I'm really sorry, but I'm taking this. And he was like, what? And I'm like, you don't have any choice. It's not up for discussion. It's going to look so amazing in my garage that I have to have it. I'm really sorry. And he's like, put the fucking poster back on the wall, Jason. You can have it when we're done. And I was like, oh, really? Seriously? I mean, I was obviously going to give it back, but he you know, he knows how I'm a jokester. And he's like, no, 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 seriously. We throw these things out. We can't ship them. They're, you know, they're inexpensive enough that we haven't printed and whatever. So I went home. And then when the thing was over, he told me when like I could come in and I came in with the bitch basket and plunk, plunk, plunked it in. And then I had to paint the wall gray because so, it was white. Yes, so, contrast. Yeah. so I have that. And then I, I did those linear edge track maps. That was for actually a road and track thing we were doing. We were doing cool garage our thing that never saw the light of day and then home depot had a sale on like their ghetto line i can't remember the name of the brand kitchen cabinets like their bottom of the barrel kitchen cabinets and i was like wait a second i could have ugly garage shit or i can do white kitchen cabinets for like a tenth the price and so i did the uppers and lowers with like a, a linoleum top on it and it was a thousand bucks all in maybe so i made this garage that looks pretty by my standards by my ghetto ass standards pretty good for all these years but now the garage door is open and now i'm fucking now i'm going for the gold so i'm keeping the home the home depot cabinets they're perfect they're great um but i had robbed to the floor and so that's step one um i took apart the studio 54 sign which i found 13 years ago at a, at a flea market and I replaced the incandescent lights in there with bright LEDs and I painted the inside. So now it's bright and white and crisp. And now I got to do a lighting thing. Why? What's wrong with all your T40s? They keep burning out. Um, so first of all, those are no longer 989. They're 1269. Uh, all right. And I make ones that are LED also, which are very bright. They're bright. They're bright. Um, the problem is to get the amount of lumens that it takes for to for that much out, light output and LEDs. One, it was a considerable amount of money, um, and I cannot deal with flicker. So, oh yes. So they have to be reasonable quality, or they are just on and off sixty times a second, and it drives me nuts. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, if you ever somewhere where you have bad LEDs, then it's. Yeah. Yeah. So my thought, like I've I've had to replace three of those fixtures in in the last year and they just, they keep burning out and the new ones keep burning out. They're crap and they're $12. Um, And so I went on the Amazonian website thingy and I ordered one of those like hexagonal bee hive looking light, two of them. In fact, one over, they were 16 feet long, eight feet wide with a border um, and they come as a kit and it was like a ton of money, like 1300 bucks for both. (gasps) for two and i'm like okay 1300 bucks it's done it comes as a kit you plug it in and i will have this like unbelievable lighting like the garage will be like the between that and the door and the new f- floor paint will be like perfectly showroomy gorgeous with a side mount garage door openers so with nothing hanging side mount is the dream mm-hmm. especially because oh, my new garage is uh tall enough to accommodate a lift oh we'll get back to that in a second because i want to talk to you about your lift situation um so I get them and the color temperature is 6,500 Kelvin, which is black light. Like it's like a black light. And I'm like, I don't want to see the stains <laughs> in any of these cars. So I had to return them. Thank God for Amazon. Um, and now I'm going to figure out what lighting thing to do. And I'm not going to do the octagonal thing because everyone else is doing that. And I can't be normal. Oh, you're talking about the inset on the ceiling where it looks like. Yeah, that sort of. You know, they do the octagonal thing in a, in a box. And so I, now I'm thinking either I'll do like strips or strips on a diagonal or maybe circles or some. I want some sort of something that makes the garage look like a showroom. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm finally going to be able to do this because I'm moving all my tools and all the shit to my warehouse. Which is... That's the actual dream. To have all your cars in one place. Well, the, the dream right. would be to have all your cars at home in one place. Yeah. I don't live in anywhere rural enough to do that. Yeah. That is, 
at I bought it a year ago, um, and so now I have 29 years left to pay for it. Um, but at 46 years old a year ago, I finally decided like it's time. Like I need a man cave warehouse for the cars where I can. I've been fantasizing for the whole time I've owned this house on how trying to figure out how I can rip the roof off of the house and give myself enough headroom to get a lift. Cause I want a lift in the house because I want to be able to work on the cars in the house and then go inside and have a sandwich and then come back out and take a shower and all the rest of the stuff. Um, and it just, it was going to cost me a stupid amount of money. Warehouse money. Where, well, right. And that's warehouse money. I wouldn't get back because some other person, when I go to sell this house one day is going to say, why does this garage have vaulted ceilings? This is dumb. And it adds no value. Instead, I can take that same amount of money and apply that towards a space that has value. So I did it and I bought a 1200, 1200, something like that, 1200 square foot warehouse. Um, And after, and I did the floors, uh stunk up the building, uh, painted the whole thing black because I'm weird like that. Um, And uh, it's been sitting there. It's been amazing to store the cars in one place. I know they're secure. I can climate control the whole place. Um, so I have a dehumidifier in there and, um, and then I decorated it with a fit. illicitly, <laughs> well, suggestively the first, my, my theme, fabulously that too, my theme was like, I think like when the garage door opens, like at the house, right? The garage door opens and the studio for a 54 sign just goes on to, with a dis, little tiny disco ball. That makes me laugh every time I open it. But I thought like the garage should also look like a nightclub. The, the warehouse should like look like a nightclub. A warehouse party? Yeah. Like, I just kind of thought, like, the vibe that I want is, like, gothic warehouse. So I thought, well, if I paint the walls black, then the cars pop, right? Everyone does white walls, and they they put shit all over the walls. Posters and paraphernalia. Not doing that. I'll go the other way. And so the emphasis will be on the cars. And then what I want is, like, a row of six, like, gothic, overly ornate crystal chandeliers that nobody else wants, but will look really cool in there, right? (laughs) Come to find out, those things are fucking money. Like used shitty old chandeliers. Yeah, Paolo even agrees with me. Like they were going to be worst case three hundred bucks each. Best like worst case, best, best case. case worst case thousand each. And I'm like, okay, maybe I'll spend two or three hundred bucks on on stupid lighting that's just there as a wow factor, like a mood setter. Um, but of course, I put like big, huge, actual shop LEDs, like you know, hi hat LEDs in there for real light and i'm like ah this is stupid and then i found a disco ball a 54 inch disco ball um and you know in reno for sale by a stripper so you could not have better provenance for a disco ball i would agree with that so previously i previously owned by a stripper yeah, I think yeah we talked we about, talked about it in the context of the raptor I believe. right exactly so i got a raptor called my mom i'm like hey you want to go buy a 54 inch disco ball from a stripper in reno and she's like what yeah Love my mom. Um, so we made a road trip out of it we played in the snow um and i got the disco ball and then so there's a little mezzanine. I chopped down most of the mezzanine because I, I I needed floor space and I want to be able to put a lift in there. And uh, then I'm like, all right, I got to make a railing for the mezzanine. Like, how do I do this? And I was talking to a friend who's a f- nut job, complete nut job. And he was like, oh, you should have like a mannequin in there. Like if it looks like a party. So he finds me a mannequin on uh, Facebook marketplace in some place outside of Sacramento, like halfway up the hill to Reno. And it's, she's like this. And I'm like, okay, that's kind of funny because I can have her holding the fire extinguisher by the front door. Like that's pretty cool. So I drive all the way out there and I buy this mannequin. It's 50 bucks. I'm like for $50, I can have a, like, I can have a fun wall mount, like wall mounted mannequin holding up a fire extinguisher. Uh, again there, and there's a whole fucking room full of old mannequins. And there are two of them that are lying down, like a guy and a girl. And I'm like, wait a second. I have to make a railing for the side of the mezzanine. That's going to cost me like $100 worth of two by fours and, you know, four by fours. And, and it's going to take me a half a day to build the whole thing and whatever. Or I can put two mannequins, recumbent mannequins, and staple them to the ground and be done with it. And so I did. Okay. And so they form the railing for your mezzanine. Well, it looks like a railing gone wrong <laughs> because <laughs> because they're both recumbent. Because they both okay. So the weirdest thing is, so I put him down first, and I you know turn around, I I jump down off the mezzanine, and I look up, and he's looks like he's like he's <laughs> mid coitus. No, he looks like he's touching himself mm. in between his legs, mm. and I'm like, 
that's fucking disturbing. Okay. So then I get, and I take her and I go, I just have a ladder. So I just crawl up the ladder and I put her down and I kind of had to flip her over and I was moving tires around and I jump downstairs down, like back to the bottom and I look up and she's supposed to be like on her side, kind of like, you know, like this. Suggestively. No, it's, it's not even reclining. She's just reclined. But I had flipped her upside down, and when I did so, she is face down, ass up, heels to Jesus. Mm-hmm. And I fucking, I just looked up at this mezzanine Scene. and burst out laughing, because it looks like this is Cordis Interruptus, and she's crawling away from him, and he's touching himself. And I just fucking, I took a picture of it, and I'm like, this is the stupidest fuck, I am keeping it. So I did. So they are stapled down to the ground in this ridiculous position um, that's, when the garage door goes up, the disco ball's motor turns on and the light hits it and there are like red red or different color lights on them and it's just stupid and... Makes you smile. It makes me laugh. I'm considerably behind you in my progress of uh, garaging for the first time properly. <laughs> you, need to, you need to learn to just... I'm just trying to get the cars in at this point. Okay, once you get the cars in, like I did that first, then you have to just have a sense of humor about it. Yeah, like, so... It, the listing described it as a two-car tandem garage. I, as soon as I walked in there the first time, I was like, ah, if you get rid of the closet, then that's clearly space for another car, possibly two. Not, it's not really two, it's one car uh, because of the position of the door and the position of the garage door that goes into the house. So, it's, But that makes it a three-car garage. It's now a three-car yeah. garage because we got rid of the closet. Uh, and then I think there's space if you put in a lift, and it could be potentially a four-car garage. So the two-car awesome. garage is already seeming like it's tracking towards a four car garage which that's is awesome exactly the vision that i had you know when i was like this is the place so you'll come straight in you'll have two you have a car right by the door and then you'll have three cars on along the back wall basically two cars on the back wall mm-hmm. and then one on the top of a lift nice for storage for storage and you don't need a two post like a service lift right no i mean i can't i can't put four cars in there if i do that I mean, you could technically leave one on there. Yeah, but I don't, I wouldn't leave a car. No, no, no. But even then it would be too wide. There's not enough mm. width. And in any case, yeah. yeah, so it'd be a four car garage. That's cool. Yeah. So that's, that's a hell of an, I finally have a garage that like, isn't a sort of cluster fuck. <laughs> that's, I mean, it's bright. It's got the high ceilings. Um, and you're direct, your unit's directly above that. Right. Mm-hmm. So the only bad thing is you have to walk up a flight and a hair, a uh, flight and a half of steps every time you walk in your front door. You know, that's just cardio. I mean, that's also part of the San Francisco experience. That's true. Your house is narrow and skinny. And you've already walked up a a 7,000 foot hill to get to your house. Also true. Yeah. Um, Mountain climbing gear to go to the grocery store. Definitely. Um, Yeah, I am. uh, So the the whole, the joke is I realized I hit my one year anniversary at the the warehouse. I'm like, I've owned this place for a year and I still don't have a lift. I'm like, wait, the whole point in buying this was to have a lift. Of course, the financial hit of buying it has slowed down the prior priority and the progress on that. Um, but I think I'm finally there. So, so what are you getting? Um, so, well, I'm working with Ben Pack. They have a GP. Their lift, the GP seven lift, uh, is one that I really like um, because it's relatively narrow. And where most two post lifts have one hydraulic ram cylinder on each side in the vertical columns, this only has one, and it's on top. Mm. And then, so it uses. It must be, it must use, uh, I don't I haven't seen one in person yet. I don't know how it connects to the sides to actually lift. It's got to be cables. It's got to be cables. Chain, yeah. The, the, the chains, yeah. the really thick link chains. Probably. Uh, it's got to be, but either way that allows me to, so it's a small space and it's fill, right now I have six cars in there and that's really absolute max. Um, but the proportions of small warehouses make it really difficult to put cars in. I mean, you know, I could probably fit eight or nine in there if I put them on go jacks and slid them around, but I don't want to have to start any car to move another car. Um, and so four can get in and out sort of at a 45 degree angle along the side. Um, and then that was my original idea. And then I bought Beatrice and then I bought the Honda beat. So, uh, those two are, or, you know, there are two cars on the main side. Um, but the, so the lift will go in at a 45 and it's so narrow that it doesn't really take up much more space. Yeah. So I'll, I'll wind up with an 11 foot wide, um, like workspace around the lift. And so then I'm like, all right, well, I guess I got to start moving tools over. So I bought uh, home Depot had a special on Husky brand tool boxes. And so I b- bought a bunch of toolboxes and 
fucking blowing the whole budget and I can't wait to start working on cars in there yeah, under a lift. That's the dream. That's every person. I mean, and it always has to start somewhere. I mean, I was just delighted that my first place ever had a garage and then I was in an apartment where it was a big parking garage and I was like, okay, I have a spot here. It's just like, get the cars out inside Right is the first priority. I mean, I it's, it's a pain because there's so many, especially in an urban environment, you're just like, oh, there's no option for a garage. I think most people who live elsewhere in the United States where it's like largely suburban, this is not really a thing, but in San Francisco and definitely in New York, I mean, it's a non-starter in New York, effectively. Like, this is why I could never live in New York City. Like, the you idea... Can have a garage. I mean, there are plenty of garages under buildings and... Yeah, I guess. But you don't want to... But that the majority is, of places don't have that. True. And you don't want to drive on those roads anyway. The yes. roads are... Yeah, because you come out of the garage and you're in Manhattan, surrounded by... Potholes. And, and Manhattan. Taxi. <laughs> yeah, no. You're right. I didn't... We grew up... I mean, I grew up in in the city and then right outside the city of New York and we never used the garage. Like, you know, my parents just kind of parked outside and I, didn't, I never understood the logic of that. What is this? I mean, every time I look in a garage, especially in San Francisco and I look in a garage and it's full of someone's shit instead of a car, I'm like, what are you doing? What are you doing? I mean, like I used to go out, I have to go out in the morning, like if, you know, on the, on the rare mornings that I got to ride to school and like scrape the ice off the windshield and let the car warm up and whatever. And I was always like, you know, you could just put it in the garage. But it just never occurred so to me. Americans life. fill it with shit, right? We didn't That's even have that much shit in it. I mean, when fourteen, I put when I was fourteen, I put my Volkswagen Beetle in there, much to my parents' chagrin. But um, yeah, my my dad's motorcycles were in there, but it was there was plenty of room for a car. It just didn't. I mean, we didn't have a garage door opener, so I guess maybe that's well, why work. they did it. It's the work. Yeah, yeah but how much, it's a garage door opener is 150 bucks at the, you know, yeah. whatever. But it's not, I didn't understand the beauty of a garage until I got the Scirocco. And I've, you know, lived in a uh, apartment. Oh, I've always, it, like, I had dreams about, I think part of it is traveling around and seeing, like, these collectors. In, in the course of doing my job, I travel around to see collectors and their, like, garage setups. And I've just seen some insane setups where you're just like, holy shit, there's this one ferrari collector in southern california where his floors are all like look like italian villa tiles and he's got mm. frescoes painted on the wall and there's enough space around every car where it's like this they, like it's less densely packed than a car showroom mm -hmm. and each one has like focal point lighting i mean and there's like Man. beautiful f1 engines on stands and shit like that i mean it's like stuff like that there's some sub there's a guy up in the sierras who has a subterranean lair with which is also a drive-through and then there's like a f restoration shop in one corner and there's like garage doors inside of the house that separate different functions of each part of the garage from each other and, and here like, i was all proud of myself for for painting the having the floor painted look oh at yeah and also it's exposed timber oh uh, fuck you really in the, oh, in the ceiling man. and then like it's and none of it's visible from the outside because you have to yeah. drive around the back because the house is on a slight grade and so the grade from the front door comes away and then the garage door is on the side oh, on man. one side and then the back on the other i mean just these really outrageous gorgeous garages really garage like mahal yeah, yeah garage mahal where it's like and in, and in both of these cases it's in the guy's house like it's downstairs mm -hmm. below the house that he lives in and like that's the dream i'd be fine with that's like a, a barn dimensioned building too on my property just having it all right sort there. of right there yeah is like, my rule is i have to be bike biking distance from my cars at all time so like if, if for whatever reason i need to just hop on a bicycle i can go and get one mm -hmm. um and i'm sort of roughly there now i mean i could do it it would be an hour it would be an hour ride and it would, you know, it's kind of a brutal one, but whatever. Um, but the dream is like, you know, this is what the joke is. It's all relative. Like, you know, that first house that I bought had a one car garage that I squeezed two in. That like, was holy shit. the most amazing thing in the world to me to not have to do like a brake job in on a gravel parking lot. And the reason, by the way, that a garage was so important to me was because I'd gotten the Scirocco and I lived in an area that was really really bad in Pittsburgh and I didn't know it was really bad because I went and looked at it during the day and it was fine the problem is there was a school directly across the street from me and every time the school let out the kids destroyed everything in their path I mean it was like unbelievable I didn't know why everyone would put their cars behind their houses at three o'clock and then it took me two days to figure this out like this was a rough rough neighborhood um and I when my neighbor woke me up one morning she's like you need to go out and look at your car and uh, there were, the windshield was smashed in. I have a picture of this. Scirocco? Scirocco, yeah. And there were footsteps, uh, like footprints on everyone's hoods. And this person had been walking along the hoods of everyone's cars, hit the freshly waxed, perfectly clean, slippery as shit Scirocco hood, slipped and fell through the windshield, um, and then jumped off, scratching the hood, and kept going. And I knew who it was because there was 
only one person in the neighborhood with red hair and she lived she was the drug dealer who lived right below me and she had like ass length curly red hair and there were red hairs all over the car uh did not kill her wanted to um but that was a sort of like all right now i i called my landlord and i'm like i'm moving and he's like well you have nine months left on your lease and i'm like you can go fuck yourself i'm out and i moved to a he was nice enough to let me out because he knew i mean i showed him what happened i'm like i'm done she's like all of her customers are banging on my door at like three o'clock in the morning let me in. They're all fucked up and whatever i'm like before i get shot and killed or have to kill someone for stepping on the hood of my car uh i'm moving so i moved like around the block to a house that had a driveway um and then like i bought this house i was 22 years old you know seventy-seven thousand bucks pittsburgh um you know and it was like the biggest luxury in the world to not have to scrape ice and then to be able to you know to clean the floor and then lie on an ice cold but clean floor oh my god and you know that's now 20 many 20 many years ago and now i'm like i need a lift i'm just once you've worked under a lift i know that's why part of why i don't like to work on my own cars like if I have to have the car up in the air, like I just don't, if I can't, sucks. I mean, I usually just take it to work and find a spot that's available yeah. on the weekend. That's very ideal. That's a really good solution. Then you have everyone else's tools and equipment. And no, I don't use every oh, other really? people's tools. No, I know better than to ever use mechanics tools. Smart man. <laughs> that's like sacred. Yeah. No, I mean, it's their livelihood. True. I mean, fair enough. Um, but you have their equipment like, you know, smoke machines and air. And um, yes. yeah, I'm outfitting that warehouse to to the fucking i mean i just got back from horrible freight earlier today and i bought you know i air like compressor. harbor freight I, you know i like that harbor i know freight. that it's not the most beautiful quality but just the like variety and like the possibilities associated with walking in there and you're just like look at all this cool shit that i could do that i've just bought like yeah. that's my problem is i get i get out to the car and i'm like how much shit did i just buy again but no i love that they're they have everything now that sears is gone because that was my room. That was my routine. Like go over to Craftsman, go to Sears and buy all good Craftsman shit and return whatever you broke. And then they replaced it all for free. It was awesome. But now that that's gone for the stuff that I don't really need to last Harbor Freight. I mean, stuff that I like, you know, I, I'm not going to buy really good sockets, for example, there. No, but, no. But if you're like something that I need to use like six times yeah. in the next 10 years, Sure. And it's like a specialized device. I don't know. Totally sure. fine. Totally. I bought so much stuff there. I mean, this is where I should be asking for sponsorship opportunities because now I, this this is a genuine question, right? So the house is outfitted. The house, my garage, the house is outfitted with everything I need. The only thing that's not in there at the moment is the engine hoist and the engine stand. Those are in the warehouse. But everything else I need, I can build a motor. Nothing I'm missing. It's all in there. Now I put the lift in, I, I'm going to put the lift in the warehouse. What do I do? Put everything there. Put e everything where? At the warehouse. So what happens then you when... you just live in your house. But hold on. What happens if I get a flat? Call now what? Triple A. No. No one's touching my fucking cars. So this is... I mean, this is... Uh, you're just going to end up with two identical sets of everything. I can't do that. I'm, I, I refuse to do that. But... <laughs> but here's the thing is I work on the house too. I mean, you know, I'm just as handy on the house. I, I fuck up my house as much as I fuck up my cars. And so I need to have like my circular saw, like the home tools need to be there, which means screwdrivers and electrical stuff and all that other shit. But this maybe is why I, the dream is to have everything in, in the place. house. Right. And then you just like live in East nowhere. Yeah. So I, what I think I'm going to do, I think the plan is I'm going to take everything that I own and I'm going to move it over to the warehouse because I know all those tools. You know, there's always like that one bolt where you're like, oh, I know. I just take the, you know, the, the, the shallow 10 mil that's quarter drive with, with the wobbly extension that's eight inches long and you can get to it that way. Da, 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 da. So I, I've mapped all that out in my mind. So I have, I know exactly what I have. I'll move all of that over to the warehouse and then I'll buy a new, well, new to me, maybe even a used tool set, reasonably sized stuff like a full set of sockets a full set of rent, uh, ratchets full set of wrenches gear wrenches obviously and then just have a hammer there and a couple screwdrivers and then this is a slippery slope i have well look i need to be able to change a tire i need if a car doesn't start i need to have a jumper box or something there right you're just gonna end up with two duplicate sets Damn i mean it. i like to do this or, or whenever i need a, div a tool and i'm like in the middle of a job and i'm like i don't have this tool i will immediately go on my phone and buy it and yeah, that is course. like one of my life philosophies that has been really just a huge value add it's just just be like this is the time in my life like forget 
and agonizing over it. Like you're going to need this at some point. Buy Just it. start buying yeah. the thing you need because mm -hmm. i for so long i was like eh, but i <laughs> like just forget it just on the spot i would love to know what i've spent in tools i would not i know i think i it wouldn't it's not that outrageous right if you think about the local prices here for labor yes when you take that into account and paying someone else to do other stuff i mean independence or what now pushing 200 bucks an hour yeah okay so i bet i've probably spent on the order of oh god Three, four, five thousand bucks, plus the toolboxes. Want to think about all the power tools. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but those aren't to work on the cars, really. Some of them are okay. But look, even if over the course of the last, so I've had, I've been working on cars for twenty-five years. If in the course of that, when you account for jacks, jack stands, uh, toolboxes, like that, toolboxes are expensive, as I just relearned. Um, Ten grand, twelve grand over 25 years so that's 200 dollars a month that's one hour of labor mm -hmm. a month yeah if you're and handy I've, enough uh, yeah, yeah. yeah you are i am yeah so they've paid for themselves 10 times over for you yes definitely yeah, yeah. so that's i mean god i like how i can rationalize all this expense yeah, so what happens when you're smart enough to rationalize anything god, you can rationalize good. your way into justifying something even that isn't rational yeah it's not good did you know that this is a FYI for the group that carbon monoxide detectors have a certain beep pattern. No, I think it's four. It's like beep, 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 beep. And I know this because I have security camera in the warehouse. And every time I start either the Ferrari or the Mercedes, even if I start it and just immediately fuck off right outside and then bring the other one in, the carbon monoxide detector goes off for four hours and I get wow. these alerts like CO detector, uh, co alarm detected every like minute for hours so mm. i've now also just bought an extractor fan that i can leave on for an hour after i leave but who knew so then what is are there other beepings used for other things like a regular smoke detector must be a different one i think they're just constant right i don't know every time they i'm just trying to think of all the times there's they like go a off gap. well every single time i turn my oven on there's one i have four smoke detectors in my house and one of them which is the furthest one away i mean literally oven on <laughs> and five like i just oh, awesome yeah not helpful but um yeah now that you know there's a there's a, a beeping signature pattern totally unrelated i got called out on instagram for because i made a post on the honda door buzzer which is do you know what honda's door buzzer beep 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 beep, beep, beep. right beep, which, beep, beep, beep. which is h in morse code and I said, that's super clever because like, that's just a little Easter egg. And it turns out that's a complete coincidence. What? It was not done on purpose. Really? Yeah. I'm not rescinding you know that, that post because I still think it's How the coolest. How do you know it was a coincidence? Apparently, according to somebody who called me out, who then linked to an article who was from somebody who spoke to Honda PR, that they determined internally that, that it was just a buzzer that they bought. And it was a coincidence. Which would explain why Nissan also. Yes, says, I was da, gonna, da, da, da. just going to say yeah. there were other car, uh, yeah. Japanese car companies that were not Honda that had yeah. that did that. But somebody said that Acura does an A, so I don't know. I no, mean, the Acura one's the same. Well, it depends what Acura, but all the Acuras like I've heard from like the nineties, it's exactly the same it's as da, 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 the Honda da, da. one. Yeah. yeah, who knows? Huh. Whatever. But well, I was very, very upset to learn that. News. Right? That's very just when you think news. it's an Easter egg, only to find out it's just a rotten egg. I mean, it's just a coincidence. Yeah. Um, well, right. I want to. I want to know more about this uh, garage lift situation for you. Um, yeah, I mean, it's uh, one thing at a time. It's now just, I don't know, we'll see. I would like to have four car garage. I would like to have, a, I mean. How many cars do you own? I, I, I always forget. I don't know. More than four though, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a problem. I mean, I mean, it's like seven or eight or something, <laughs> I think. I don't know. They're strewn around just like every other damn person in this not area. Me? Except for you. That's not yeah, true at two, all. You have two locations. Three. Because I keep the, the the camera van here. Oh, at the studio. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is uh, this is always the dream. We always fantasize. I fantasize about garages as much as I fantasize about cars, yeah. for sure. I love seeing those showroomy ones, but not. I don't actually really appreciate the like what you said about the guys at the Ferrari. I appreciate it for a couple seconds, and then I think it's always sad because the cars never really go anywhere and they never get driven. Um, I mean, having a garage like that does not make it mutually exclusive with true. driving them. I've seen some garages that I just saw the Keller collection again, mm -hmm. and you've only apparently seen the small version of this, but um, thing, yeah. Arturo Keller is the wine guy. 
Uh, he's local here in the Bay Area, and his um, he was rated the number one car collector in the world. By really? some, yeah, I looked him up and I was like, what, really? And it was somebody real, but he's the number one car collector in the world. He has the largest privately held Mercedes-Benz collection in the world. This I did know. Um, and he's got a lot of stuff that's not Mercedes. Yeah, a um, lot of Italian stuff. A lot of stuff. And I am not one for car collections. Like, you know, yay, you're a hoarder. Um, his grandson has become a friend. And uh, I've now twice gone there and just hung out. Um, and the, the, the collection is not public. I'm not going to talk about what's in it. Um, you can imagine, cause it's, especially in the Mercedes stuff, there's one of everything. Um, but oh my God, they built all these buildings. It's in, they're built into the hillside. Again, yeah. it looks like nothing. Um, and what my favorite part of that collection is other than the 800 cars or whatever the fuck I it is. I think I know what you're going to say and I'm going to say the same thing. What is but it? But I don't know. Tell me. I was going to say it's the like road that they have. That's mm. not a public road where they drive them all so that they don't have to be on the public road. Yeah, they do have a, it, they call it the track. They're like test track around the facility. It's not, not really, I don't think anyone's really sliding everything around it. But, no, but it but undulates and it has like terrain mm-hmm. and it goes through the property and you drive around on your own damn property and you don't have to register anything. And, and you're not dealing with uninsured Ultimus yes. um, or Dodge Rams with, anyway. Um, no, that's actually not my favorite thing. No, that my was favorite thing is that every car in the entire collection within an hour can be outside running and driving. So, you know, the, the reason it could take an hour is because they could have to move 10 other cars. But mm-hmm. every car runs and drives and functions and they're all driven every year at least once. That's cool. Yeah. Because fuck museum pieces. Not fuck museum pieces, but like, you know, how cool is it that you could say, hey, you know, look at that, whatever it is. In 20- Would you like to go drive it? Yeah. On our private road. Yes. That's the fucking dream. Um, their workshop is pretty cool too. If you haven't seen that, I Um, I wish we could, I wish we could do like a special curmudgeon where we go there and just explore, but it's overload beyond belief. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's just absolutely overwhelming. So that's why you just got to pick like in a collection like that, you have to pick one or two cars. There's too many cars. I mean, for me, uh, this scope always, I mean, it's limited by money. It's an immaterial thing to, to even think about, but I think the real number is probably 20. I think even that's too much. I know it's a lot. I mean, for one person, look, the, the fact that this collection maintains the cars and, you know. It's a full-time in, job. Oh, or several it's people. many, many full-time jobs. But the thing is, they also buy cars and restore them at, and then help them, help Mercedes, for example. So they will often bring cars to, they have historically through the years brought cars that are missing from uh, important um, collections at Pebble Beach, for example. Like, hey, we're doing we're doing an exhibit on whatever, blah, 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 but we're missing these three things. What do you think? And they're like, yeah, we'll bring two of them. Um, and so they're sort of, they help to, the collection sort of helps other people to be able to see the cars, even though they're private about it. And I really like that. I think that's pretty cool. That's like, the way to be if yeah. you're going to be one of those. Yeah, not hide it away and not tell everyone you have it and, you know, whatever. I mean, a lot of people collect for themselves. And I mean, we've talked about this many times about how the appreciation for these things relies on people having firsthand experiences yeah. with them. And so I feel like there's some sort of philanthropic duty. It's, it's not just philanthropic is maybe excessive, mm-hmm. but there's some duty to, to get these cars out and exposed. And people do approach me with the Miura and thank me, which is weird. I've never, it's the only, but how many ever. times you see a regularly driven Miura? Yeah. And so people are genuinely appreciative of that. Especially the way feel, you drive it. I feel silly when people, when people say that, but uh, you know, I'm glad that they're appreciating it and experiencing it firsthand. And, you know, hopefully making some core memories for someone somewhere. Yeah. Well, it's easy to forget. You know, you see that car regularly. Most people wait an entire lifetime and have never seen one in person. Um, and so the fact that you're out tearing up back roads in it, um, you know, yeah. I, I, no, you're not doing anything dangerous. But I mean, you know what I, my, my point is? Like, you're not getting in it and like, don't go near it and just whatever. Yeah. You park in a parking lot for cars and coffee and you take off and everyone gets to hear it and you'll drive it on a rally. That's really cool. So. Uh, now all you need is a place to store it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> It'll look good in the new garage. I'm uh, excited. It will it. make it into the new garage, unlike the old yes, garage. Yes, correct. Yeah. Also that. Very cool. Uh, that This was a sort of pointless carmudgeon, but we talked about garage garages. I want to... Okay, let's make it not pointless. Send us links to pictures of your garage mahals or lighting ideas. I want I want lighting ideas. Um, Stuff like that. Or if you need there. your floor done... Uh, hit one of us up and we'll refer you to the other guy. Right, if you're used. local in the Bay Area. Yeah. Especially. Um, yeah, no, this is not pointless. Garage. I mean, I spend more waking hours in my garage than I do most other rooms in my house, if not all of them. 
That's certainly been the case for me lately because I just got a new sort of Craigslist dumpster fire. It's not a <laughs> Craigslist dumpster fire. It's actually got good bones, but it's it's been. I mean, every day is like a little something. You do something every day, and See? it's gradually getting better. Good. That sounds like one of those YouTube videos where it all gets better. No, it doesn't. <laughs> doesn't. No, because once it's good enough, then you sell it on and then buy another sort of needy foster pet. Sell. Uh, you you don't sell things. That's right. Yeah. That's why you have. I know. What so is that? Many cars. Is say that word again. I do it all the time. Sell. Do that's what? why I've owned fifty cars. Sell cars. Se- se- how do we pronounce it? Pronounce that for me. Sell. Okay. Okay. You. Point made. You sold an E30. I recently. Sold, I sold an E30. I sold the Hyundai XL. It's still here. Uh, the guys picked it up yet fucking rad dude here's the joke i posted this thing for i go and take studio photos of the 1994 hyundai xl insert required and uh and i posted on i don't know whatever a bunch of places and it sold within an hour i had six people saying all right where do i send the money and one guy one of the guys one of those six people had bought a dodge no plymouth colt turbo from oh that's from, the guy yeah that's the guy to own that car that's the guy that he's like i want to take this and make it perfect and have it be a radwood queen and i'm like it's yours uh and he's now going to fly down from the pacific northwest and drive it 800 miles home with he's, his daughter god i can't i cannot believe that the planet has this incredible breadth of humans on it not fucking awesome yeah i mean that car deserved to be saved and it's that, nice to see that happen yeah. i mean that was part of the reason i bought this e320 on craigslist and i was like i was equivocating about whether to buy it and finally, I was like, it's such a nice car and a cool color combination, and it'll clean up really nicely. It deserves to be saved, even though it's a little bit not exactly what I was looking for and surplus to my needs. But it just, <laughs> it's car, not what I wanted, and I don't need it, but I'm fucking buying it anyway. Just to save yeah. it, like, like yeah. you did with the E30 you had, right? You had it's just, a rescue and, program, right? Yeah, I mean, you see something that has good bones that deserves to be saved and is in the wrong, I mean, it's in the wrong part of the neighborhood, listed in the wrong place, mm. and you're just like, ugh. It's such a nice car and it'll clean up so well and I, I, it deserves to be saved. And, you know, people always deride bring a trailer flippers or whatever. But it, the fact of the matter is if you put it on bring a trailer, it's going to end up with an enthusiast who's going to save the car. And it's not going to just, you know, end up in the hood on Craigslist and get purchased by someone who's not going to look after it. Right. And, someone looking for cheap, cheap, cheap old transportation. Yeah. With a three pointed star on it. Mm-hmm. So that's cool. Well, congrats for saving another one. Yeah, I know. you're doing God's work, Derek Tamsko. Yeah, just like you did with the Excel. I did. I hope. I hope that car is. I hope it makes it home. I mean, I have no reason to think it wouldn't. It, we put 50, 60, 70 miles on it, whatever it was, and it's perfect. I mean, other 50, than everything, 60 or seventy miles, and other, everything. Yeah, but off. 50, 60, 70 track miles. Let me let me point out. Like we were not nice to that poor thing. We okay. literally raced it, drag raced it. I mean, I slid it sideways around a whole bunch of corners. I slammed on the brakes, had the entire front end. It was fine. AC okay. ice cold. <laughs> All right. Well, I look forward to seeing it surface at a Radwood in the future. Me too. Um, okay. And so don't forget to like and subscribe and and call your local guy to call it. No, what, what, what are we supposed to say something here? Uh, redo your floor? No, I don't know. <laughs> Stay tuned for additional car mudgeon content. This yep. was episode 82. We'll be back next week, as we always are. Probably. Almost unless, certainly, unless we get fired or shit canned or we got canceled for well, some that, terrible thing that we that said. That last episode about the insurance thing could have gotten us in trouble. It might still. It might still. Could still do. Yeah. Um, or, or next week could be a holiday. I don't know. We try to take holidays off. We try. Yep. Anyway, thanks for watching uh, slash listening.